Greetings, travelers, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Splatoon Amiibo Challenge Edition. This is Draco Breach reporting in, and this time, we are going for the Tier 2 Challenges. So, let's get the Charger Challenge on the road. Now, some of you may have noticed that I have spent some orbs. Well... I think it's only fair to show you what those orbs went to use on. So give me one moment, and I'll cut in what I spent that on. <laughs> I spent it on power! Yes, the rapid fire is well, well worth it. It shoots so much faster, it isn't even funny. Anyway, the level 3, which I have spent on cost 1500 orbs and level 4 cost 1700 orbs and it was completely worth it. It is so much faster. I can imagine that it's going to help a lot with taking out some enemies, but that's not the point of this episode. The point of this episode is the amiibo challenge. So give me one moment and I will cut right back. Yes, that power trip was completely worth it. <laughs> I really love how much more powerful you can make yourself with how, with how many orbs you spend. Now, it is expensive. Like I said, it costs 1,500 orbs just for the... Oh, okay. I forgot you could do that. Anyway... We're building up more orbs again. We'll see if it's going to be worth it to spend it or not on further enhancements. Because all that they really have right now is, well, s increased splash radius on the bombs. Which does not help in the amiibo challenge because as you can see all we can throw is that. And I don't even think we got to keep our... Actually, quick way to test that. I am almost at maximum ink, so let's maximize my ink, and one, nope, you don't even get to keep the, not gonna hit you, nope, you don't even get to keep the enhancements that would help the amiibo challenge. I think that's the easiest way to take them out. Anyway. I'm not quite done with my E3 game hit list. Next on the agenda is actually a game that I've talked about a few times, which is Rare Replay by Microsoft, available, of course, exclusively on the Xbox One. Oh, you can't paint that service. That's not good. Refill my ink a little bit. They came out. Now, it is a collection of 30 years of Rareware history, which includes some great games, some lesser-known games, and some games that generally are not considered good, or at least very few people like them. One example is uh, Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, which most people do not like. However, there are a few people who do like that game, including uh, one guy that I watch on YouTube every once in a while, Psycho, who I, for the longest time, mispronounced as Sicko. Go figure. <laughs> I'm sorry, Psycho, I did not mean to mispronounce your name. It's just that I'm not very good at recognizing how people want to say their names sometimes. Okay, let's see here. Anyway, there are a ton of very good games on there. Now, the question does remain what version of some games they are going to include, such as Conker's Bad Fur Day, which is an M-rated game but has lots of weird, fun elements that I surprisingly, perhaps surprisingly, I should say, like. Uh, isn't there one of you guys, another one of you guys? No, I must have taken him out. Because a lot of people... A lot of people say that the Nintendo 64 version is the superior version because it was unedited, it was uncut. Whereas the 
uh, what was it called? Live and Reloaded version of it that Microsoft had basically remade. It is censored, and a lot of people don't like what Microsoft did as far as censoring that. Which does make sense, but it did. Why didn't you fill up? Okay, whatever. But there is a point to it. You know, Nintendo did not censor Rare's work. Microsoft did. But there's a lot of other games, including Battletoads from the SNES is going to be included on there. I don't know if they're going to actually... I would like to see them up-res, or not necessarily up-res, but uh, upgrade the textures that are available in the game. Don't know if they're going to do that or not, but it sounds like something that they could do. Um, and actually that brings up a point, kind of ironically, the another rare announcement, um, Sea of Thieves, or whatever it's called, was not something that impressed me at E3. Now, I'm sure there are going to be some people, well, that did, game did look good, and good on them, they're going to have a game that they enjoy. I just didn't like how the game looked. That's me, and I didn't like it. Uh, next on the agenda is going to be... Oh, let me take care... Oh, come on. Go away. <laughs> You're stuck. Next on the agenda is going to be ReCore. We don't know a lot about the game, but it's being made, made by legendary game designer uh, Keiji Inafune, who, of course, is responsible for Mega Man, also known as Rock Man in Japan. Because Rockman, Roll, Blues, Bass, Forte. Yes, he had a plan. And you could say that uh, they kind of ignored that plan with how they localized it in the United States, changing it to Mega Man, Proto Man, but still keeping Roll, Bass, and Forte. And by the way, no, it's not Forte in this case, is it? For music, it is actually Fort. Eh, well, whatever. Okay, I don't know what hit... Did you hit me? Okay, well, anyway. <laughs> um, ReCore looks like it could be a lot of fun. It has a lot of very interesting elements. And... Keiji Inafune, I really can't disagree with him. He's made a lot of good games. And I am glad that somebody is paying him to make a game that he wants to make. I hope Report turns out very good. And I hope that it does not suffer from any, well, too much executive meddling. Because I have not liked exactly what Microsoft has done as far as executive meddling. You can see that with... I, I'm going to complain about this a lot. Oh, rareware, basically. And I think I'm done complaining about Rareware for the time being. <laughs> Let's move on. Wait, what? I thought I heard... I'm... Okay, whatever. So, ReCore looks interesting. I like the ideas behind it. And it will be a game that I am looking at for whenever I do decide to get an Xbox One. Next on the agenda is going to be the Shin Megami Cross Fire Emblem to title that is coming out on the Wii U. I really, really like what Atlas is doing with it. Mainly because I love Atlas RPGs. They are one of my favorite RPG companies. Them and uh, Bandai Namco make some of the... Oh! That's me not paying attention. Make some of the, some of, in my opinion, best RPGs on the market. Speaking of Bandai Namco, they officially announced Tales of Berseria with a trailer, which does look very good. You have the main character being a uh, female pirate, people are assuming, but I'm not sure that I'm going to make that assumption because it looks like she's actually 
in prison for whatever reason, being held uh, in a uh, holding cell of some sort for whatever reason. Now, it could be that she was captured by rival pirates or something, but she, there could be another story there. And that's what Bandai Namco is very good at, is presenting a potentially hidden story, something that you weren't necessarily expecting. So I'm looking forward to Tales of Berseria, as I am with Tales of Zisteria. I believe I'm saying the, the second one correctly, although I'm not 100% sure, because I don't have the spelling right in front of me. After that... Oh, what, right. I didn't really talk too much about the, the Shin Megami Cross uh, Fire Emblem does look loads of fun, and it shows a lot of Atlas's influences, as well as the influences coming from Fire Emblem. I... it's... it looks like a fantastic game. It has a lot of very fun, very good-looking elements. And what's been revealed from them playing it at the Treehouse and from developer interviews, there is there are definite Shin Megami Tensei uh, elements in it, and the the um, developers even talk heavily about their Shin Megami Tensei influences. Now I'm a fan of of Shin Megami Tensei and Fire Emblem. I love both series. And I do not understand some people complaining, is that, you know, it, oh, it looks more like this than that. It's like, no, it, it actually looks like its own game, its own entity. And that's what I really love about it, is that they're not... Oh, okay, I did not pay any attention to that. Is that they're not going for a simple crossover. They're making it with its own identity. It could actually become its own series, its own idea, its own identity. And that is what I love about about the Shin Megami Cross Fire Emblem title. So, yes, I am very much looking forward to that title. And I hope it does well. Oh, rats. Need to do that again. So... I think it is fair to continue to a new title at this point. So, Super Mario Maker. Some people will argue that Nintendo showed it off too much during E3 this year. And that is a fair argument, I do understand it. But honestly, it's a big title, and it is for the 30th anniversary of, uh, of, the, Mario, of the Mario franchise. Because September 13th of... Uh, oh, what year was it? I am... But anyway, September 13th, 30 years ago, Nintendo released Super Mario Bros. on the Famicom, Famicom Entertainment System. Also known as the Nintendo Entertainment System in the United States. Actually, no, it was the Family Computer Entertainment System in Japan, wasn't it? Well, regardless... Uh, oh, rats. This is not going to work out nearly as well as I hoped. Okay, so it makes sense. Not not only that, they're releasing it very close to the precise 30-year anniversary of Super Mario Brothers, but that they advertise it so strongly and so heavily at E3. I'm looking forward to the game. I do like that it's... I do like um, that it's incorporating so much Mario history that it's incorporating so much from the franchise's, you know, very strong, very storied history.
and there, I, I love how much time and effort Nintendo is putting into creating sprites, you know, not necessarily in the era that they quote-unquote belong to. Now you have Yoshi as 8-bit, which looks hilarious. And you have all the variations of Bowser. And really, Nintendo is doing a spectacular job with... with the game. And it makes a lot of sense that they were very... Oh, I, I'm repeating myself at this point. But anyway, Mario Maker looks good. And it looks like there's a lot of challenge to be had with what you can make. And I'm looking forward to making some tough-as-nails challenges for people to play. I'm also looking forward to making some just fun, relax, have some just play the game kind of stages because not everything has to be challenging all the time. You can have a good time with something that's easy. Okay. So, my general opinion is Super Mario Maker. It is going to be a fun game, and I'm probably going to record and upload some uh, play challenges on my channel when that comes out. And I am going to be a little more cautious with this guy here because he can... Okay, and we got through this challenge, so that is another tier down. The Octo Nozzle. These challenges really do present a different perspective, a different way of approaching the game. And that is oh, uh, a very interesting way of looking at challenges, that's for sure. So. With that, we have finished the second tier of challenges, defeated the Octo Nozzle, and gotten near the end of my E3 hit list. What's next, you may ask? Well, you're going to have to figure that out as we go into tier 3. So this is, for the time being at least, this is Draco Breach reporting out. God bless and safe travels.